like to make it brief. I, actually, what I'd like to do is go a little bit through the agenda of what we have uh, planned for this session. We have essentially two topics that we'd like to discuss. First, the first topic will be what are the schemes that we are talking about? What are, and to, to actually be much more explaining of, of what it is that we are uh, talking about when we are talking about hybrid schemes. And the second topic will be really looking at some of the case studies that are being, um, being implemented or have been already implemented uh, lately um, in some of our countries. In Uganda, we are more of utilizing the groundwater resources, and uh, we have not yet so much exported the surface water resources. And you find that the rural poor are depending on the groundwater resources, and uh, investing in the groundwater resources itself is another um, investment risk that the private sector is not yet ready to, to, to undertake. It, mostly what happens in, 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 a poor, uh, in a poor country, usually what, who is served is the, the core area. And extending financing or extending service beyond the core area is oftentimes a, a dilemma for a private operator because the cost of extension is much greater and therefore uh, they would have to charge a much higher connection fee to the poor communities that are extended. So the difficulty, what we're trying to relate here, is the difficulty of expanding coverage. And usually the expansion of coverage means expansion to poor communities beyond the core area. So what o OBA does the GPO output based aid does is it provides public sources of financing, grant financing, to allow for the poor to connect without paying the connection fee and therefore does not put in jeopardy the financial operation of the private op of the private of the private operator. There are, uh, the people who are not connected are usually paying uh, higher uh, uh, monthly fees to water sellers or um, uh, to uh, other types of uh, water service providers, they, they, they would normally be charged by the, by the utility, but they cannot connect to the utility because this initial connection charge would be too high. And this is why uh, we think the example of uh, outboard based date is uh, particularly relevant to, the, to this session. It appears generally uh, water as a sector is not as profitable as would be like telecommunication or the road sector if you had to charge road tolls. So that basic aspect of lack of profitability, of low profitability in the water sector, I suppose is responsible for, for bundling funding into the sector if it is coming from the private uh, sources. Uh, Francisco Nunez from Mexico City's facility. Um, many times it's not that hard to get a grant for a new pipe or a new plant or for certain kind of infra infrastructure that actually will increase your supply or il will increase the level of your service. But usually to get a grant or to get funding for, for new meters is kind of hard, especially when, when you get uh, the money to, to buy meters for, for the poor customers. Because many times the, 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 the rates they are getting are extremely subsidized. And if, if you are talking about willingness to pay, people actually will pay more to get better service, to, to have better quality in, in their water, to get more water, I mean, especially if they are getting like certain hours a day and you're offer them to have 24 hours a day, obviously they're going to pay more. But it's, it's not easy to, to have an increase in, in your rates if you are telling, telling them that you are going to spend money in meters to charge them more. 
these private firms do ignore these issues as it is so, so expensive. <coughs> Maybe there's a need to departure now from enhancing these private firms to consider all the issues so as to enhance sustainability on developing ground, ground resources. Another issue may be in, in the case of Tanzania, particularly in the Resam city, in the issue of uh, groundwater information. Although we have potential groundwater resources, but uh, information is, is still a problem. Maybe there's a need now to enhance the availability of information concerning groundwater availability and the quality. Now, the situation in Jordan is what we need is to develop our water resources. And uh, investment in this, uh, these projects is going on here in Jordan. For example, uh, we are investing in uh, the treatment plants in order to replace the irrigation water which is being used to irrigation uh, to replace the fresh water for to drinking uh, water. Uh, in Casablanca, uh, <clears throat> as I said, we are managing the three service, but we are not responsible for the production. So it's a, uh, there is an unbundling between uh, what is production, both for electricity and water. Uh, in both cases, there are national companies, public companies in charge of producing electricity, in charge of producing water. We buy to them. Uh, the fluids, electricity, and water, and we distributed. I am um, managing in Egypt. It's a very new project to share with you the fact that not all projects uh, that have hybrid financing are in water supply uh, and not all are o OB output based. Uh, uh, this project is an irrigation project. It's in the, the West Delta. Uh, the government would uh, provide surface water to the area uh, to replace the groundwater exploitation. They would allow for both conjunctive use of, wa of groundwater resources as you cannot effectively uh, monitor or, or uh, restrict the continued uh, groundwater uh, uh, pumping. But what they wanted to do is apply full cost recovery on any investment and they wanted to for the first time in Egypt, apply a volumetric tariff. In other words, that you pay for usage of this water. And I think it's been very useful for me to, to look into this idea of avoiding, you know, how to package this, this kind of financing to avoid some of the problems we face in the public sector on uh, trying to reduce public debt. And I think this is very important to share the risk with the society, not only with the companies, but also, also with the users, uh, be in better conditions to access the capital markets, and I think that's, that's also very important, and um, more than anything else, to ensure that we deliver properly, and I think this, this idea of the output-based output -based subsidies is obviously something that, that is important. If I have to stay with two key ideas that for me has been very important today had been the, the issue of managing affordability. I never heard that before and I think that's also a lesson not only for emerging countries but also for developed countries themselves. Uh, and this idea of using subsidies to increase little by little the, the possibilities of people to, to contribute more as they generate wealth because the idea of these projects is that they generate wealth, but you have to manage that properly. And also the other idea of going to know the willingness to pay of the people directly. I think a lot of the times we, we know the willingness to pay through the politicians. They tell us that the people are not willing to pay. And I think it will be very nice if we go more to the people and ask them directly for that. So I think uh, I just want to finish this. I hope this is enough for, for final thoughts. And I just want to thank very much, really, for all the questions here. Again, to the questions to our colleagues in the different countries. And I think it's been a very nice session. Thank you all to all. Thank you.